<clears throat> okay. All right. Good morning and welcome to the Historic Site Preservation Board meeting, City of Palm Springs, Tuesday, July 10th, 2018. May we have the roll call, please? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, Member Marsh? Here. Member Kaiser? Here. Member Lavoie? Is uh, not here. Member Hayes? Here. Uh, Vice Chair Burkett? Here. And Chair Johns? Here. You have a quorum. All right, thank you. And Ken, please, on the report on the posting the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted for public review at the City Hall Bulletin Board on the west side of the Council Chambers and at the Planning Department counter as in accordance with applicable law. Okay, acceptance of the agenda. Mr. Chair, Please. I do have a request to add one item to today's agenda. We received an application for a certificate of approval from the Palm Springs Art Museum. Unfortunately, we were not able to get our staff report on the agenda in time. Rather than holding a second meeting in the month of July, as they do need action taken on this request, I would request to add this to the agenda as item number 5C. And with that, we would need a vote of the HSPB to add the item to the agenda. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, Ken, did you get the first and the yes, second? Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Lavoy has entered the room. And any discussion on adding this uh, agenda item? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed to that? Mr. Lavoy just came in late. All right, thank you, Flynn. Thank you. Uh, and with that amendment, we accept the agenda as posted, as amended? Yes, okay, thank you. Um, so ladies and gentlemen of the audience, the, the following time has been set, up, set aside for members of the public to address the Historic Site Preservation Board on agenda items and items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Although the Historic Site Preservation Board values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, it generally cannot take any action on items not listed on the posted <clears throat> agenda. There will be three minutes assigned to each speaker, and testimony for public hearings will be taken at the time of the hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, we have no public hearings on the agenda today, so this will be your only opportunity to speak to the board. So I will open the uh, public comment period. Anyone in the audience wishing to address the board, please come forward. Good morning, and please introduce yourself to the board. Good morning. Uh, is this mic on? Okay. Good morning. My name is Robert Stone. Um, I'm here to address item number 5B, the proposed changes to the um, Robinson's department store. Uh, I have no objection to the proposal as written with one exception, and that has to do with the, with the addition of a garbage cart, or not a garbage cart, a shopping cart uh, storage area on the exterior of the building. I was present at the time uh, BevMo came forward to have their permit approved to go into the Robinson space. And one of the requirements imposed by the Planning Commission at that time was that all shopping carts at Bevbo be maintained inside. Commissioner Hirschbein made that motion. The entire Planning Commission accepted the recommendation and included it as a condition of approval. At the time, the Bevmo rep was also there and said that that was a condition that he could live with. Unfortunately, after taking occupancy of the space, BevMo was not quite as cooperative, and, and uh, they had to be uh, cited twice by code enforcement by Nadine, who had to come out there and tell them they needed to move their shopping carts inside because they were simply leaving them outside on their own. I don't think this is a particularly sensitive addition to the east elevation of this building. I hope you will disapprove it. I also think the suggestion that you approve it places you at odds with the Planning Commission's insistence that all shopping carts be maintained inside the um, retail space. Uh, and, I, and I brought you a picture of the exterior elevation of the east side where the gar garbage or the uh, shopping cart enclosure is proposed. And what, it will, will, what you can't see from the drawings in your packet is it will require the removal of the landscaping shown 
uh, on the right side of this image. Uh, this is an image that I took just yesterday uh, to accommodate that and resulting in an extension of a, of a solid, tall, uh, concrete block wall all the way to the uh, edge of the glazing of the opening. So I think this is both inappropriate from a historic standpoint and it subverts the recommendation of the Planning Commission and I hope you will um, approve the other requests for modifications which seem appropriate to me but turn this one down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the audience today wishing to address the board during public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. The first item on our agenda uh, is election of new officers, since we are taking on a new uh, period of time. Flynn, please. Mr. Chair, members of the board, what we will do is we will accept nominations for the chair, and then after we have accepted a nomination for the chair, we'll take action on that, and then we'll accept a nomination for the vice chair and take action on that. By way of background, let me just tell you a little bit about how the Architectural Advisory Committee went about it with the extension of their members. Uh, Maria Song, the chair of the AAC, is termed out. However, she has been extended for six months, as have the other members of boards and commissions by the direction of the city council. What the AAC decided to do was they decided to extend Maria as the chair for an additional six months. And then they elected a vice chair, uh, Mr. Tom Jakeway, who presumably would be eligible to take over as chair once Maria um, is off the board in January. Uh, Planning Commission has discussed doing something similar, keeping someone in the chair position and then having someone new in the vice chair position. With the limitation of the terms being extended, um, Mr. Johns could continue serving in a capacity uh, if you choose to do that. So I just wanted to make you aware that even though we have some members who are only serving for an additional six months, they could still serve as chair or vice chair. Uh, and then we can do new elections in January once we have new members on the board. So again, I will leave that at the discretion of the Historic Site Preservation Board members, but just wanted to offer that option to you. So with that, we'll go ahead and take nominations for the chair. Please. Um, does this city um, reappoint people who have been termed out because of extraordinary qualifications? Uh, no, they've done the six-month extension on those who are termed out at this point in time as part of a greater study to look at districting and get more diversity on our boards and commissions. But generally, no, they don't do that under extraordinary circumstances. I haven't seen them do that. Okay. Yeah. Dick? Yeah. Yes, then um, I would like to uh, nominate Gary Johns to uh, finish out his term until uh, January. Uh, he's done an extraordinary job for this board. And I know, and I, there are items that uh, I remember him bringing up that I am sure he would like to see to uh, fruition. So um, I wholeheartedly uh, put my support and nominate uh, Gary for the chair. Okay. So we have a nomination and a second. May I have a uh, vote of the board? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none? Okay. Mr. John, you will serve as chair. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, continued vote of confidence. Mr. Um, chair. Yes, please. Then I would nominate Dick Burkett as vice chair. Second. second. All right. Excellent. So we have a first and second on, on Dick was continuing in the vice chair. Todd was our second. Uh, any discussion? Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. Well, so we'll maintain the helm here, Dick. All right. Thank you. Thank you, board. Thank you very much. Uh, number two on our uh, uh, on our uh, agenda is the consent calendar, and it's the approval of the minutes. Uh, did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? They were uh, uh, concise, given the brevity of our of our June meeting. So I'll accept a motion to uh, approve as um, submitted. <coughs> Mr. Lavoy and Mr. Marsh on the second. Any further discussion on our minutes? 
Dick, please. The June minutes. Pardon? The June minutes. Yes, please. Right. Uh, yes, just a couple of minor changes. On 3A, um, on the last paragraph, it's just the misspelling of a name. Um, it's my name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So noted. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Dick? And the only other thing is on 5B, on the subcommittee report uh, about the ordinance on the second paragraph, uh, item three. Uh, it's uh, right now it says that an applicant have provide proof. So I would think it would just be an applicant provide proof. Correct. And that's it. Thank you all for right. those. Thank you. So with those amendments to the minutes, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Excellent. Thank you. All righty. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have no public hearings. We'll move on to number four, unfinished business. 4A is a certificate of approval request by Marmel Radziner, applicant on behalf of Grit Development LLC property owner for a signed program for the Town and Country Center. Um, I, I'll complete, I won't finish reading it because I do see the recommendation is that it is continued to the September uh, 11th meeting. That is correct. All right, thank you. Under new business, here we are today in the room. Under new business 5A, we have a certificate of approval request by Glenn and Judith Hudgens, owners, for alterations to the Hugh Stevens residence, a class one historic site located at 645 East Morongo Road, zoned R1C. Staff report, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As noted in your staff report, this is an application by the homeowners to make uh, modifications to the Hugh Stevens residence, adding a uh, bedroom and some enhancements to the bedroom area of the home and to um, propose a, an accessory dwelling unit uh, onto the property. As noted in your staff report, John Porter Clark and Albert Frey were the significant architects associated with the design of this home, which was completed in 1950. There were a couple of renovations done over the course of the um, home's existence, including um, some work on the home after a significant fire that occurred in the mid-2000s. <coughs> The uh, historic resources report that's attached to your staff report provides information about the historic significance of the home and the defining characteristics that the home has. As noted in the photos in your staff report, the home is basically a masonry structure with a flat roof with several portions that have a gentle slope on them, and there are several design motifs that um, accentuate uh, uh, Clark and uh, Frey's design. <coughs> including the uh, punched windows that you see in the bottom of page three and the uh, gently sloping uh, roofs and punched openings that you see further on page four. <coughs> the uh, proposed uh, addition includes a 667 square foot addition comprising a bedroom, bath, a new master bath, walk-in closet off the northeast corner of the home, and a 448 square foot accessory dwelling unit with an attached carport. Uh, the landscaping for this site is essentially uh, uh, mature, uh, and what I would call naturalized or desert landscaping. No major proposals are um, included to change the landscaping other than to remove the material that's in the place of the proposed additions. <clears throat> On page six of your staff report uh, is an, uh, kind of an interesting comparison. You'll note that in the original drawings uh, that you see on the top part of this page, there was um, a future bedroom shown off the northeast corner of the home and a future guest house that's shown in the approximate location uh, that the applicant is proposing the current um, uh, accessory dwelling unit, as you can see in the lower image on that page. <clears throat> the analysis of uh, this application against the guidelines of uh, the Historic Preservation Ordinance are uh, provided for you on pages 7 and 8 of your staff report. And uh, as you'll note, uh, and the applicant will further explain, um, the the uh, two items that staff has in making a recommendation for your approval on this project is uh, sloping the roof of the ADU with a consistent slope that is, uh, exists on the living room, and then uh, to also incorporate a revised design on the existing screening of the roof-mounted mechanical equipment to be more harmonious with the strong horizontality of the existing home. And on the middle of page three, we provided some examples that might be considered in terms of uh, stone veneers that might help make that particular mechanical enclosure a little bit less obtrusive. <coughs> 
that concludes my staff report. We are recommending approval with those conditions. The applicant is in the audience to further explain the project. Uh, as noted in the um, material that's presented here also, you'll find they have provided a comprehensive analysis of the project against the Secretary of the Interior Standards in their uh, final uh, uh, application, which I will, I think is behind the vicinity map. <coughs> and their preference is that the, uh, the roof slope of the accessory dwelling unit be at a slightly different slope than uh, the existing uh, living room slope, and they will further explain their, um, their reasons for that request. Um, I'm available to answer any questions, and the applicant is here. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ken. Any questions of staff? Bill. Um, do we have an enlarged north and south elevation by any chance you could put in the screen? Uh, yeah, I, sorry, I did that whole presentation without pulling this up. Bear with me a moment. Is that the one you're looking for? Um, no, you want the full yeah, elevation? The composite. This oh, one. That one. Okay. okay. Thank you. Bill, are you good? Mm -hmm. Any other questions of staff at this time? Dick? Can I do? Yes. Um, and typically, we have a site visit to these properties before we designate. Is there one plan for this particular property? Uh, Member Burkett, this is not an application for designation. This is a certificate I'm sorry, of approval. We don't right, normally but, we no, don't no. normally schedule site tours on certificates of approval. Okay. Um, then I would ask. Is that, um, if there's a feeling that the home is maintained in integrity, um, since the uh, in, in this period of time, have there been any other changes that you're aware of, or uh, none that we're aware of? Okay. Um, okay, and the other question would be: um, th it's mentioned on item three under the analysis that the uh, required screen, uh, the roof-mounted mechanical equipment, will be replaced with more appropriate screening. Um, would it not be a good idea to know what that screening is before we make an approval? Uh, you could uh, request information from the applicant, or you could condition your application or your action today on that being brought back to you or other direction that you may want to give the applicant. I'd just like to see what the rest of the members of the board <clears throat> felt if that was that important or not. I might suggest that um, we hear the applicant and have the applicant's presentation, and I think that might uncover okay. or answer some of our, our pending questions. Um, any other questions of staff? I would ask um, that we look at uh, page 7 before we hear the applicant, uh, the analysis, uh, number 1, the very first sentence says, the proposed additions are visually harmonious in their appearance to that of the original house, but have been designed such that they are, can be visually distinguished from the original historic structure. And I would ask uh, Bill, please, um, isn't that what we want an addition to do to distinguish itself from the original house? Yes. Okay. All right, um, so no for thank you, Bill. No further questions of staff. We'll ask the applicant to please come forward. And if there are more than one person coming to the table, we have certainly additional chairs if you need it. I'm okay, a, please uh, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Forrest Otto. I'm the architect uh, working with the Hudgens. And your microphone, yes, it's great. You're on. Okay. I'm on. Good, welcome. Okay. Welcome. Nice to be here. Uh, the only um, issue I see, the, uh, we don't have any problem with uh, redoing, we were planning on redoing the surround for the um, air conditioning equipment. So that's on our agenda anyways. And we would, you know, p pass that by the committee to make sure that they got, uh, we got their approval. So the only other uh, issue on the recommendation 
is the slope of the roof on the casita not uh, identically matching the slope on the existing living room. And um, the reason, I, I, the difference in the slope is three degrees. Um, and I do not believe it's perceptible, or it will be perceptible on the house. You will never see the house in this elevation looking like this where you see the whole thing at, at the same eye level. And if you're standing in front of the house looking at the casita, you'll see it at diminishing at an angle. If you're in the casita, you'll see the slope on the house diminishing at an angle. And even on the flat elevation here, which no one ever sees it exactly like that unless you're standing on a, on a six foot ladder, um, I don't think the difference in slope is discernible. The reason for the difference, that minor difference in the slope, is that it affords us the opportunity to put a clear story window on the west end of the roof on the casita, which has an absolutely magnificent view of the mountains, uh, just a stunning view of the mountains. And it seemed to me that that was a pretty reasonable compromise to request. I think even on the drawing here, you would have difficulty if I didn't have numbers on it, um, seeing the difference in the slopes. And if you were standing in front of the building or on the south end of the property looking at it, I still don't think you would notice the difference in the slopes. Is that basically your presentation? That's it. Okay. Any questions of, of the applicant, please? Um, Bill? Yeah, some, something you just said. Um, so the casita will block the mountain view from, from the main residence? Not at all. Okay. Specifically, the setbacks on the casita were determined by the setback off the street. The edge of the main window in the living room of the existing house, which we is an incredible view when you walk in the house, so it's to the side of that for the south elevation of the casita, including the overhangs. And on the east, it was determined by an existing wall with a, having a four-foot walkway available. And on the west elevation, the, the limit of the casita was determined by having the, the carport line up with an existing wall and um, gate and driveway that's already there that we want to be able to just drive straight into the, to the carport. So the, the parameters of the footprint were pretty much predetermined by the conditions that were already there. Anything else, Bill, on that at this time? Do we have a roof plan? <sighs> um, I don't think I have one. Um, and and do, we, do, we, do we have the mechanical equipment on the elevations? Uh, no, no, they no, are not. No. Um, you just passed, I think, the roof plan. Actually, actually, that drawing will do. This one? Okay. Yeah, if you, let you, let you me just push it up it. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. On the floor, <clears> you <throat> can see the uh, Claire Story window for the casita, which will have uh, a pretty amazing view. I need to have a, a few inches of flashing space below the window. I need to have a full beam to support the extended overhang rafters. And in order to get that, I needed to increase the slope by three degrees, which is, you know, 90, 45, three. Forrest, Bill, while you're mulling this over, Forrest, for I failed high school math, yeah. three degrees translates to three inches, six inches, ten feet? Well, it, it, on the, um, one of the, the uh, plans you showed showed a, um, a calculation with a, a, uh, something in 12 number for the slopes of the roof. It's probably on the big one here, this one, yeah. So, so the difference is how many inches, or what is the difference between the slope of the main house and the new slope on the casita? Mm -hmm. In terms of inches? Well, um, what does three degrees, I, you know, I'm looking at it and I do see that it's, I'd have to really stare at it to see that it's different, but I can see that it is different, and how much difference? Okay, well, if you go back to the top of that, that one. Top of this one? Yeah, 10 on 
Well, here too. You could do it from this one here, right it's here. Point seven and twelve, and one point four and twelve. Yeah, we always we always measure uh, roof in you know inches per foot, and uh, you, otherwise the inches is not really meaningful because the size of the roof on the house is much much longer than the size of the roof on the casita. So the the difference in inches there, the difference here is between point seven inches in twelve and one point four in twelve. Which works out to three degrees, <laughs> off of off of uh, <coughs> horizontal. Okay, thank you, Bill. Back to you. Um, so the casita has no side overhangs. Side overhang? No, it's like the just like uh, the house. And so the house has no side overhang. On the on the living room, you'll see there's no side overhang. Okay. And on the, uh, I think the whole east, the whole northern elevation, there's really no side overhang. It's only uh, east and west overhangs, and of course the big one on the south. Then, then, then by increasing the slope on the casita, how how much more window did you gain? Well, uh, I I felt that I needed at least a just just to, to mention would be fine. Well, I needed a th I got a 30 inch deep window in that. A 30 inch high window. So it would be 24 if it was the same slope. <coughs> uh, would it come down a full foot? Probably not. It's only three degrees. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Um, Forrest, uh, the screening material. What do you have proposed on this plan for the screening material? We don't, we don't have it on the plan, but I think someplace in one of my uh, emails back and forth with Ken, we talked about doing a horizontal hardy board, which is a fireproof, uh, textured uh, fireproof board uh, within the same size as the existing surround, because we don't want to do any additional penetrations to that roof, uh, but it would give a horizontal a horizontal uh, match, the horizontality, as you, I think you mentioned, I think, or Ken mentioned, I think that's important. Would staff be uh, amenable to working out that final detail on the screening material for the mechanical equipment? Based on the board's direction, yes. Okay. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> I tried to make a bad joke about the slope of the roof, the three degrees, and because I really, truly don't understand it. But I do understand that the difference is attractive to me, that they not mimic each other. Uh, uh, and that was the question that I asked uh, Bill earlier, whether we want it to court, sort of stand out a little bit or be distinguished from it. So uh, uh, if there aren't any other questions, or uh, again, I'll turn to Todd. You're, you're familiar with... Uh, Mr. Frey and Mr. Clark's work. Uh, do you have some some feedback? Well, please. Uh, so I guess my concern is so I went back through and reread the secretary's uh, points on this, and the three core principles that apply to this in the Secretary of Interior standards are that it be compatible and it be differentiated, and the bigger concern that I have perhaps is that it be incon incons inconspicuous from the street. Um, I've been on this site probably three or four times, inside and out. I drove by a, uh, again a couple of days ago, and obviously everything you're doing is going to be very conspicuous <coughs> from the street. Um, so that hurdle is going to be a little difficult to overcome, but the bigger concern that I have perhaps is that it must be differentiated, and so I would concur with you that I would probably support your roof the way it is because it's different from the existing roof. Uh, but it also says that uh, the, and I quote, the difference may be subtle, but it must be clear. Um, uh, and I don't really see these as being clear enough to me. I think a subtle change in paint um, that building from the street, even when you're standing on the property, is almost difficult to see that it's a masonry block you don't really structure. See the you really can't see it. Right. So the fact that you're doing the additions out of stucco versus masonry block 
is really not going to make any difference from the street. Um, you'd have to be standing right next to the building and almost touch it to see that one's stucco and one's block. Um, I would almost support doing the additions out of block and making it mandated that you can't paint it um, because I would think that making it out of the same material as the existing one and having it so apparent that it's new is a better solution <clears throat> than what I think is almost trying to mimic uh, compatibility. Um, and I'm open to you know hearing what the rest of the board has to say, but I think my bigger concern here is I understand that um, I think it's great that you're uh, 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 building on, you know, Frey and Clark's plans. I think that's great. Um, I don't have a problem with the addition. Um, I don't have a problem with the guest house. Um, I think there was some belief or desire to do that from, from day one. Uh, the bigger obstacle I have is the fact that um, people are going to, years from now, um, they're going to repaint the house and they're going to paint it all the same shade. And all of this differentiating all of this differentiation that's happening that might be subtle now is going to go away, the paint's going to fade, and you're not going to see it. And so I would like to see something different done as a solution to make sure that uh, that difference is clear. And are you only concerned with the street side? Um, I am mostly, con yeah, I am, I am mostly concerned with the street side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because I, I think, I mean, I'm assuming you will admit that they're right on the street. Yeah, yeah. And three, three street sides. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the 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 east. I'm mostly concerned about the north side. Right. Um, the east is the garage, and it's just the addition and the garage. Right. Um, the uh, the south side is very difficult to see. Yeah, there's a thing. It's basically hidden. There's a wall and yeah. now, now and planting and a lot of and, heavy landscape. Yeah, right. so the south side is difficult to see from the yeah. street. I'm, I'm mostly concerned about that north frontage. Right. No, that's a, the a presentation little. side of the house. Right. And the plaque will be on that side. And right. that's what, if anybody takes a picture of the house, that's the right. photo they'll take. So I would almost like to see something done that mandates the additions in perpetuity remain different a different ma building material well, or finished material i mean i also get that you know building out a concrete block is a very different thing than building out of wood and stucco right, um right. but as i said and, and i'm just one person here but i would almost prefer and think it's more sensitive to put the additions out of concrete block and never paint them and that way when people are driving by there's continuity and they're like oh why is that different? Well, that's different because that part was not designed by Frey and Clark, and that part was not designed by Frey and Clark. But there's some continuity there. I I kind of like the I, I like the idea of the differentiation by a different finished material on the casita. I'm not sure I would like the look of just unpainted concrete block. The property is on two sides, and eventually on three sides will be having block wall around it and it's just uh, not I don't think it's a great look I don't think uh, you saw a lot of mid-century uh, unfinished concrete block everybody painted it or did a finish on it didn't they well Frey actually used a whole bunch of unfinished concrete block mm -hmm. you look at Frey house too you look at the building that we're in right now you look at the fire station on Indian Can Canyon you look at the uh, the uh, Yacht Club. Yeah. I mean, he's there's a, a tremendous amount of of previous work that Frey did with unfinished concrete oh, okay. block. All right. So that would be very much in keeping with his body of work. Okay. Yeah. D was does do you know if the original house was unpainted? That I don't know. I don't know. And and it's almost a little like I went back through and read Patrick's the nomination, nomination. that Patrick wrote wrote and. Um, it's uh, it's it's a little hard to tell, um, even from those older black and white pictures, um, if it was painted Originally or not. Originally or not. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, if it wasn't painted, that that brick would really stand out much more. Right. Um, would that be an, uh, a way to go? Is to like sandblast the brick? Well, I, I, I mean, so so if 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 restoring the building would involve sandblasting the original structure and leaving it natural because 
I don't know what color those blocks are. They're most likely not gray because, I mean, well, that would be an assumption. But when, you, when I look at a lot of the other stuff that Frey did, they're sand-colored, brown, rusty-colored yeah, right. block. And so if you were to sandblast that and make the, the existing original structure very apparently block and then add stucco to the two additions, that, for me, would be a lot more acceptable. I also would like it because you would potentially be restoring the house to the finish. Well, that that's was. on the assumption that the, the original block right, is and, colored. And I if don't it's know, not, I don't know what. If not, would we? Would you just? Uh, well, you know, the the clients are are going to paint the original house. Right. And they're looking at samples here. That's what this is, right? Yeah. And um, not too far off the existing, but a little bit un of enough work. First, would you pass the uh, color sample sure. around? Thanks. Um, but. Your concern is if if we did a, a different paint on the on the um, stucco, if we did a smooth hand troweled stucco, and did a different paint color on it, it would not be enough differentiation from the original brick because the paint has kind of obscured the pattern on it. Well, so I'm even looking at these three. I'm concerned that even the lightest and the darkest is not enough when you get into. You know, it well, those are all samples for the original house. None of them, I don't think, are they any of them for the casita? Well, no, but, but even so, so okay. say if they were in the proposal, it's talked about being a subtle difference. Right. And, and subtle is the problem for me. Yeah. Um, um, Can we take a two minute break? Sure. Um, um, hold on just one second. Um, so, Todd, do you have some, some more? I'm, I'm all good. Okay, good. Yeah. So uh, the color samples, are the color, the changes to the original house, are they in our review today? The paint job? The paint job that's associated with this project, yes. Okay, all right. So Mr. Lavoy has requested stepping outside to see this in the, in the light. So we're going to take two minutes recess okay. for you to do that, Bill. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, much better colors outside. All right, thank you all. We're back from our recess. Uh, and I'm going to continue to pass along this uh, 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 three color sample. Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, Bill, have you come to um, yeah, something I, or I, Todd? I have, I have a question. There. Please, of the applicant? Uh, uh, yes. Please. Um, I'm looking at sheet five. Bill, Bill. May, may I interrupt and have you turn your mic on? Thank you. Sorry. I'm looking at sheet 5 and sheet 5.1. The elevations appear to be different. Which ones? 5 and 5.1. Oh, did you include... Um, no, 5.1 is the full elevation. Those are different. You're seeing one that's the staff recommendation and one that's the applicant's application. Ah. Uh, which one is yours? Which one is the architect's rather? The one that's labeled 5.1 is the one that staff has recommended, and the one that is labeled 5 is the one that the applicant is requesting approval of. 
Can we show these up on the big screen? Yeah. Got it. Good. Um, uh, anyone else have some input or some? I'd just like to ask one more time from Bill and Todd how you feel about the screening of the equipment. Are you comfortable with what's that it's not being, not been totally defined? No, not at all. You're not I, concerned. I, I haven't made. You want me make? I haven't made comments. No, yet, no, so. no. We're we're, yeah. we're in our we're in our information in gathering. Okay. Yeah, n not at all. Um, it it could it could destroy this house. Right. If not done right. <clears throat> okay. So, are there any other questions of the applicant, Mr. Marsh? Uh, Todd suggested that. Um, that sandblasting original building might be a, a way to uh, differentiate new and old. I'm concerned about sandblasting. The parameters of sandblasting could affect the porousness yeah. of the actual building material itself. So it could set up a condition that long term would not uh, solve a problem. In fact, it might create new problems. Uh, depending on uh, the PSI that's used to sandblast and ha not having the right professionals do a sandblasting correctly. So that's one consideration. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, for practicality purposes, I don't see taking a, a large action to take the original house to try to match the addition. Let's work on the addition. Uh, and let's keep our focus on that and not trying to adapt the house to the addition. So uh, without further questions of the applicant. I've, I've got a, a suggestion on the uh, casita uh, because I've done it before on con um, more contemporary houses. Is when we do a smooth hand trowel finish, we do a scoring pattern with uh, small uh, expansion joints in it that creates a pattern on the wall that might look well, we'll definitely differentiate it from the house. Okay. Well, and I appreciate you adding that. Um, I, for one, think the smooth troweled stucco on the addition and the and the casita satisfies it for me. Okay. Uh, but this is we're gathering information here. So, any other questions of the applicant at this time? Forrest, thank you very much. If we have thank any you. other questions, we'll call you back up. Okay. Comments, please. Mr. Lavoy. Mr. Mr. Chair, um, uh, I, I, I do want to see the design um, on the elevations and the detailing of the mechanical screening equipment. Um, I much prefer um, the proposal on sheet 5.1. Um, All right, can we get that up on the screen, yeah. please? Thank you. Um, what, what, what I like about it is. Um, the, the roof slope, um, at least in, on a true elevation, um, is a continuation of the existing roof slope. So it looks more like um, a, an intentional design, as opposed to sheet five, where, um, yeah, that, that's the one I prefer. See, the roof slope is like a continuation of the living room roof, yeah. so it makes a very strong diagonal. Um, and then if you go to sheet five, the, the casita looks like something totally different, which is somewhat desirable, but again, it's too different. It calls attention to itself, <coughs> and then it, it looks like, I mean, it too obviously looks like a later edition, not entirely in the spirit of the original house. Um, that, that fine line between not calling attention to yourself, but being different, and it's too different. Um, where um, a change in color on smooth stucco um, of all the additions, to me, would be a sufficient enough differentiation of the old from the new to be acceptable. <clears throat> okay. Okay. 
Any other comments? Yeah. Dan? I think, I don't think whether 5 or 5.1 would get built, that you would perceive the difference the way that you see this house from the way that I understand it. I've not been by the site, but looking at elevations like this are often misleading the way that you see the house from below, the texture and everything else. So I, I would be fine with either one. All right, well, and thank the smooth, you. And the smooth stucco works for me too. Yeah. All right, um, Dan, thank you. Um, you know, I, I, I try to defer to my architects <clears throat> at the table, the architects at the table, and to uh, certainly Todd, who has restored a couple of Albert Frey properties and uh, is well in tune to his uh, uh, style, et cetera, et cetera. I began the conversation by reading, you know, about the harmonious uh, appearance, et cetera, and asking <clears throat> about don't we want it to be a little bit different, and uh, three degrees feels like a little bit different to me. Um, so I like the difference in the roof slopes, uh, not mimicking the house slope, and the uh, smooth textured stucco on the addition in the casita is, uh, is acceptable to me too on the house. And I do know the house. I've known the house for quite a long time and have been to it a number of times as well and have experienced it with the, the previous ownership of the house, uh, the previous owners of the house. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm seeing some difference in opinion here, uh, but I'll ask for some more uh, comment. Do we need any other questions uh, satisfied? And, Ken, please. Um, Mr. Chair and Mr. Lavoy, if I may answer your question about any roof plans on page two of the drawings, there is a roof plan of the casita, but we were not provided with a roof plan of the entire house. Does that help, Bill? There you go. Okay. Todd? I have, a, I have a question of staff. Have we in the past uh, one of the recommendations been with respect to color and painting, and if so, how has that been done in the past, and then how is that uh, uh, guarded in the future? And specifically, so if we were to say the, the original structure is painted dark brown, and this is a hypothetical, <laughs> the original structure is painted dark brown, the addition is painted white, um, you know, what what mechanism is there in place to ensure that in 10 years from now somebody repaints the house and it doesn't go to all one shade of white or one shade of tan? Uh, present and future homeowners certainly have the right and the um, ability to request changes in color and paint. What might be appropriate is if the differentiation of color is important in your approval of this proposed addition that you make that a condition of any future repaints, that the repaints be done in such a way that, uh, that the color distinction between the existing and the original is sustained. So if they chose to move the, this house instead of these uh, somewhat taupe colors to whites and grays or some other combination, uh, your condition that those colors be differentiated to clearly demarcate the addition from the original could be a condition that you put in. I like that. One might also look at saying if the home were to be repainted in the future, that the board might encourage uh, the present or future uh, owners to try to take the colors back to the original colors of the home and then allow the uh, additions that were done, potentially done in 2018 or 2019, to continue to be differentiated in their tone or color. Do you and, understand what I'm saying? Oh, I certainly do. Okay. And as a class one, it's always going to fall under HSPB review, no? A typical repaint, if it's matching the same colors or close to, we would not normally bring to the board because it would be considered maintenance. Right, but if it were to color suddenly change. go from a, a, to two tones, and if they suggested one color, that is going to trigger the condition that we would place on it that would prohibit them from going all white. Yes, but I would, in order to um, assure that outcome in any future review, 
um, if that if that importance of the differentiation in color is important, I would suggest the board make that a part of its action. And the reason I'm saying that is at a staff level, when you've got 20 people at the counter and somebody comes in with a repaint and it looks pretty much like the existing house, there's a potential that it could get approved. So if the distinction in, in color between the existing and the new is important, that's a condition I would suggest you put in so that it reduces that chance no, at the 100%. counter in the future that we make an error. And, and it is possible. I mean, we're, we do the best we can to review these things carefully, but you know, when you've got a, like I say, a backup at the counter, it, it could get reviewed and said, well, these colors are pretty close and get it approved. And this could easily be <coughs> 10 or 15 years from now. It could right. be, you know, quite a distance in the future. All right, so when we come around to making a motion, if it seems like that's an action that we want to uh, condition the approval with, uh, you'll help us craft that? Sure. Okay, thanks. Mr. Lavoie, did you have something, please, more? Yes. I um, thought so. <laughs> um, buildings, uh, elevations are, and line drawings are really not a good way to describe architecture. Um, and, and more and more architects are moving to 3D models of buildings because they, they more accurately describe the, the, the building both to the client and to the public review bodies. Um, and, and if we're agonizing over this difference in roof space, which we seem to, or roof slope, which we seem to be, and the relationship of the old to the new, um, then perhaps um, a, a, a rendering or a 3D model of the building um, might be requested or considered. Um, and if, if, if we're concerned that um, the, the, the paint might, might slip through the cracks, and it, it will, um, more than likely, um, that, that perhaps a different stucco texture might be appropriate on the addition rather than the smooth. <coughs> When the applicant um, had a, a thought about adding a, a, a different detail to it, a, 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 a channel, a scoring, a scoring, a scoring well, how do you? That, that, that might be, but, but that's a very contemporary, almost postmodern way of addressing architecture. Um, the, the modernist would be more likely, I mean, where I live, there are two textures because they ran out of money, and mine has a heavy knockdown, and my neighbor has a smooth. <laughs> but it shows that mine was the first unit built. <laughs> so, that, I mean, that's one way of doing it. One finds a variety of different stucco textures on modern architecture of this period. So then do I hear you saying that instead of a smooth stucco finish? It might be a heavy knockdown, which, which would... You're speaking Would, in, in terms now that... Yeah, of architectural terms. Yes. Heavy knockdown is when there's a lot of texture on the stucco, and it shadows differently. So when it's painted, it's a slightly different color. Okay. And that, that textural difference would differentiate, to the Secretary of the Interior's satisfaction, a differentiation between old and new. Okay. That sounds like we're making some progress here in, in formulating a, a motion. Ken? I've put up in the screen for you also just to have a better sense of the existing surface texture of the home. As we uh, evaluated this application and the question about the surface texture being differentiated, our impression was that the existing home, the, the evidence or the, um, it's clear that this is painted block and there is a scale and a module and a, it's very clear that you can see those concrete masonry units through the paint. And our impression was that if this addition uh, were to be done in a smooth stucco, that that was an adequate amount of differ a visual differentiation between the surface textures. There's quite a bit of texture, as you can see in this photo, on the existing brick or block. And uh, at a staff level, we, we did consider this question that you're debating. And our thoughts were that the smooth stucco would be an adequate visual differentiation. But it's for the Ken, board No, to I appreciate that. I appreciate that, <laughs> that uh, addition there. Um, and I would say that staff has probably looked at this project for several more hours than, than we are looking at it today. Uh, so I certainly uh, appreciate their, uh, their input. 
let's come to the screening of the mechanical material, and if there's a way that we can uh, suggest or resolve or um, some thoughts on that. The, can refresh my memory, the applicant suggested it be in, a, in some kind of a board? Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Otto suggested the material uh, is hardy board, and hardy board is a, a manufactured material similar to masonite. It's a hard, dense material that uh, generally holds up better under our severe weather conditions than wood, natural wood. Ken, is it similar to the replacement wood on the Tockwitz Plaza? Yes. Okay. That was done in a, a lap type All right, so I have a frame of reference of what the, the material is. Right. The, okay. the hardy board was cut into strips or purchased in strips and then lapped like siding or like the original wood was. Okay. And I, I um, Mr. Otto has not explained um, beyond what he did today with you what his detailing would be on the hardy board but we, we can work with him if that's the board's choosing to help articulate that if, to okay. whatever you're looking um, for. In, in the staff report, <clears throat> we see some several examples of some stone work uh, added to, to uh, uh, screen that material. Bill, I'd ask if, 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 a, if a, some of this um, brick block work were... It, it, to add that to the roof, it, it, it's what? No, it's not a good. It, okay, it's not a good thing, unless it were actually coming up from the ground up through the roof. Yeah. So, your thoughts, please, on a hardy board solution. Um, I, I, I'd much rather see aluminum a deck, the, the the aluminum you see that that has the profile to it, painted white or uh, compatible with the building rather than hardy board. Hardy board has seams, typically, and it, even though it's a cementious material, it, it bows in cups, particularly when it's 110 out. Um, it, it, and, and, and after a couple years, really doesn't look good on the seams. It looks like plywood. Um, it's, when it's shiplapped, it has, it's, it, it, and shiplap is this, when, when it's that, it's better because it's sort of mimicking horizontal siding, uh, which it's used for in high fire hazard areas, actually. Um, that, that's why I'm asking. I'd, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see how big it is. How, uh, I mean, it's going to have, it could have a significant impact on the profile of this house as you see it. Yeah. Mr. Chair, what I might recommend is that if you take action on the application today, you may be able to defer the review of the equipment screening to a later date, and I don't yeah. think that would hold the applicant up in terms of their time frame. Okay. Um, I saw some nodding of the heads. Uh, so um, I, would, I would move that we uh, uh, approve the certificate of approval as proposed for uh, this project and then I would ask my esteemed colleagues here to condition it with this um, differentiation of the of the paint being a condition of of this property's repaints in the future etc bill um, uh, that's an ingenious question um, I, I would I okay the, the um, within the motion the condition um, that the stucco be a smooth stucco. And um, the value of the paint be differentiated from the existing by two steps. Did you say two steps? Two steps. Two values. Two values. I would say at least. Yeah. So okay. Please. Um, what would your estimate be between those three, what the darkest and the lightest is? Between the lightest and the middle is two, approximately two values. Oh, then I would, and that's then what about, enough. that's not enough. Especially with our sun out here. So what would this and this be? Probably four. Four. So um, then, then we can very clearly state that the, the, um, the that this, these two, okay, they're proposing this on the walls, this on 
oh, alternate wall color. If this is the wall color of the existing, then this should be the wall color of the proposed. The additions. But instead of two steps, as you suggested, four. Four, four steps. Or as represented by the color board. Okay. Well, the, different, the difference the between yeah. mouse, yeah. back, and old white. So in, in the future, when this comes, if it should come before a future board for a repaint, they would have to prove that there's a four-step difference between the two values of the two different colors. Yeah. Yes. And that's or, as, or as represented by this differentiation. Right. So then... Well, yeah, so that I'm concerned about. But if we just say four steps, isn't that going to suffice in the future? No. Oh. Uh, you know, what, what does that mean? Color boards change every three years or so. Um, if we had the, 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 the actual number value, the CMU values of these two... Um, which are available from them. the paint, um, then that, that differentiation is, is translatable into other colors. Mm -hmm. But in the motion, we're saying these, the addition and the casita would always be four degrees, four... As, as different as represented in this color sample. Ken, do you understand Yes, that? I do. I, I, I can characterize it as, as the four... Uh, steps and also I can identify these as the colors that were used as that example or equal. Yes. Is there any further um, articulation the board is um, interested in in terms of any future repaints to go back to the original or is that not important in this case? In other words, if they were to repaint this, would the board encourage a repaint to include Taking the home Today's back. existing I'm, palette. Well, if you're you're trying to condition this in terms of managing the color into the future. Yes. So, well, you've identified that you want the addition and the original buildings to be visually distinguished from one another in their color tone. My question is: it, Does the board have any interest in the future in having this building, if it's repainted, encourage them to take it back to the original paint colors or as not. it exists today the original paint colors. we don't know what that is well, they so would have to do a study in yeah. order to determine is, isn't that. this a rebuild wasn't this building burned it was significantly burned in the mid 2000s so, so how you may we... or may not have color scrapings to choose from i don't know i don't know how badly it was burned i don't time. make that i i don't feel that that's a necessary that's fine. condition going forward that's fine. okay but what i would like since we're still in the motion and 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 making the motion to address the screening material. We want that to come back to us, or we want to rely on staff to? I think it should come back, please. Okay, so we've asked that the screening material on the mechanical equipment come back. All right, so we have a motion. We don't, we, we so what, what's outstanding is the roof. So either are we approving sheet five or 5.1? My motion is to approve the difference, the two different roofs. So sheet five. Okay, I, 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 you're, I yes, mean, sheet yeah. five. If that's me. the one with the the different, the two yes. different roofs. Yes. I kind of like that because it's where I open the meeting with, it's harmonious but slightly different, and it tells me that that one is different than that one and not trying to mimic it. But So that's the motion with what you've added regarding the paint and the stucco and et cetera. Okay. Did I make the motion? I made the you motion. You made the, you yes, made the, the motion. motion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do we have a second? I'll second. All right, Todd, thank you. So we have the second. Any further discussion on that? Yes, Mr. Chair. Please. Um, I'm not going to spoke, support the motion. Um, I, I find the proposal in five disharmonious with, okay. with the existing. Bill, I respect that always, yes. Um, so May I just read this back to you so please. I'm sure I've got this captured correctly? Uh, so the, the uh, motion is to approve the certificate of approval as proposed with the condition that the paint colors be differentiated from one another by at least four steps in the color value uh, with an or equal to those color samples that are there uh, with the screening of the mechanical equipment to come back to the board for approval 
and with the roof slopes to be differentiated as shown in this exhibit that I have right now, and I'll get the correct um, sheet number for it. And then also relative to the stucco that the uh, casita and the addition is to be a smooth finish stucco. Right. Okay. Yeah, so no, that, that, I think that's the motion. So I have a question. Do we need to put something in there that it, it's in per the colors are in perpetuity or something? I think Flynn had mentioned that. Or the differentiation. Stays permanent or something. As a condition of approval, we will have that, that the differentiation needs to be at least four steps or four values in the condition. And in the future, 10 years from now, if somebody wants to change it, then that would still apply to the, whatever Yes, we would changes. still look at having the differentiation between the original house and the additions as being four steps or four okay. values. Thanks. All right, so we have a first and a second. Um, the motion is clear for staff and for the board. I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Opposed. Mr. Lavoie is opposed. All right. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you very much. Um, we'll move on to our next item on the agenda is um, also under new business. We are at 5B. This is a certificate of approval. Request by Hal Hall, owner for alterations to the J.W. Robinson's building, a class one historic site located at 333 South Palm Canyon Drive, zoned CBD. Uh, good morning, David. Good morning, and, Mr. Chair. Uh, the staff's recommendation is to approve as submitted. May we have the staff report, please? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair and board members. The uh, owner, Mr. Hal Hall, uh, with, along with Ch uh, architect James Chiaffi, has submitted a request for a certificate of approval to make some minor exterior changes to the J.W. Robinson's building at 333 South Palm Canyon Drive. Uh, the proposal is to create additional divisible space within the building. Uh, so as a part of that, they are looking to add some, uh, a new storefront window, or excuse me, a new storefront door uh, along Palm Canyon, reconfigure the trash enclosures at the rear of the building, and construct a new screen wall uh, for shopping cart screening at the back of the BEVMO location. So I'll just go through some of the exhibits that are part of your report here on the slides. So this is a, a view of the overall plan as it exists today. What you have in the surrounding uh, red lines are the areas of uh, changes to the property. And the arrow indicates where the proposed new storefront door is to be located. So a, a, a view closer to a uh, zoomed in view of that area is, is here. So this is again the, the existing locations, how they are today with planters at the rear uh, and essentially this um, porch area at the front. And with the new door and visible space created on the plan. So this is the proposed plan where you see the new trash enclosures, the new rear uh, service store at the back on the top left of the screen, the new cart area at the bottom left, and then the new storefront door on the east or the right side of the building. What you have here on the screen is the existing elevation along Palm Canyon Drive at the top. On the bottom is the proposed elevation showing the new storefront doors. Uh, this is, a, of course, a photo of what exists today uh, where the entry doors are located on the right and the proposed doors would be located on the left. The west elevation here on the top is how it exists today. And then on the bottom is the proposed west elevation with the new metal door, the new trash enclosures with the scored concrete block, and the new uh, screen wall. Photographs of the west side of the building here showing the proposed planter locations and the existing trash enclosure. So, all the materials are proposed to be consistent with what you see here in terms of the, the new block on the west elevation. And going back to the storefront, they would match the storefronts that exist today. So in staff's analysis of the proposal, um, we 
felt that the changes would not have a visual impact to the rest of the building. The materials are consistent with what exists today. The new mullion uh, doors and windows would be inserted within one of the bays of the, of the storefront here. Um, so essentially all the composition would be would remain. There's no changes to that. And all of the important elements that were identified in the historic class one designation are going to remain. So staff is recommending approval as presented. So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. The applicant is here as well as the owner if you have questions for them. Mr. Thank Chair, you. one of the things I would like to address, as was uh, appropriately and correctly pointed out in public testimony, there is a condition of approval on the conditional use permit for the BevMo tenant relative to the outside storage of carts. Uh, one of the issues that we struggled with was should we bring this to HSPB first or should we take it to Planning Commission first? And ultimately what we decided was that we wanted to get the input of the HSPB first on the <laughs> cart storage area to see if you would approve that, if you find that to be consistent <laughs> and not pose an impact to the historic resource. Because otherwise, there's no reason to remove the condition of approval. And the Planning Commission would seek your input on any outside storage of the cards. And so that's why we have this before you first, before we take the item to the Planning Commission. I just wanted to point that out. So I would have preferred you taken it to the Planning <laughs> Commission first. I'll have my two boards fighting back and forth, wanting the other one to move All right, first. So do we have some questions of, of David, of staff, please, on this? Okay, seeing none, David, thank you. Uh, comments, um, what's the board's uh, thinking on this? Uh, you know, I am influenced. I am influenced by this condition of approval that, and I'm kind of remembering that now, that the carts needed to be inside and um, because it was a historic building and the historic district and the neighborhood and all that kind of thing. And uh, so, um, well, some other thoughts on 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 this? Uh, well, here let me let me do this. Let me do this. Let's let's look at this um, uh, in pieces, if we will. Uh, David, the uh, the plan that you have there now, the front arrow. This is the Palm Canyon frontage of the building, adding a second uh, or a, uh, an additional entry now here to this space. Um, what are the board's feelings on, on allowing or uh, giving in another uh, entrance onto the building? No problem. Okay. So, right. all right. So I think we can check that one off. That one's sort of in agreement, and that one all fits in very well. Uh, in the upper left-hand portion of the photograph, this is divide. And David, do you have the one right before it, the one that shows it as it? Okay, yes. So this is one large trash uh, area that is going to become two trash areas with a aisle between the two so that there's an exit there. And so in the proposal, we lose a significant amount of landscaping adjacent to the entry of the building, which is kind of nice coming in the back and having the entrance to BevMo and its neighbor being flanked with some landscaping. Can you show us that landscaping photo again that we're going to lose? Yeah. So the one on the left is what we would absolutely lose that landscaping for an additional um, trash enclosure. Is that affirmative? I mean, I'd have the architect speak on the okay. specifics. Okay, Jim. Of certainly, you're. We we're familiar with you. If you'll come up and just introduce yourself for the record, please. Morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. James Chief the architect. Uh, no, we're not going to lose a significant amount of landscaping. We're going to lose a little bit, but uh, most of the landscaping will remain. Can we look at the picture again? Yeah, David. <clears throat> right. This wall right here is here, going to move Jim. to about here. Can you just use the microphone, please? I'm sorry. Thanks. This wall is going to extend over to about here to, to get two trash enclosures, two trash bins into it. This door is not a new door. It's existing, and, and the plan is incorrect. I, I apologize for that. That door is already there, and it's going to become an exit door for these new spaces. And if you look at the plan view that we submitted, you'll see how the building is proposed to be divided up. We're having an awful time trying to lease six, seven, and eight thousand square foot spaces. It just isn't happening. 
People are asking for 2,000, 3,000 foot spaces. So we think we came up with a legitimate uh, solution here to add another pair of doors that uh, I don't think you'd even notice. Here, and then um, this, this would be extended down slightly, but we'd still maintain all this planting area and it would allow for a second exit out of these spaces, which is important for them. So Jim, I guess my yeah. question is, when the one trash enclosure is split in two, the one that is now basically a new trash enclosure to the south, mm -hmm. there will still be a landscape area south of it, mm -hmm. south of it, and how do the trash bins come in and out of that new enclosure? There'll be a concrete area here, but this planting area will be remain. So there'll still be a planting area there. It will be smaller than it is now. OK. All right. Um, so uh, since we're looking at this in pieces, Dick, please. OK. So um, I think this most likely is an operational consideration that would help by having these additions, right? Yes, of course. And I think we need to do whatever we can to um, as a board to support uh, anything involving with operations, because I know how important this 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 is. Um, but in doing that, I would like to ask the board, or at least we could make. I don't know if you're talking about a request or a little bit stronger. But the. <laughs> I'm sorry to bring this up. <laughs> Al's going to be like, oh, not again. But the if we could have some sort of a trade-off where the interior lighting is minimized from the street, which is so offensive, um, maybe we could have a little negotiation. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm saying so, for this project. Yes, no, Dick, absolutely. I very much appreciate that. I have a note on that as well. Um, but let's, let's just look at this now. Uh, Jim, I feel much better knowing that there is still going to be some landscaping there so that when one comes in to BevMo, it's flanked by, by the landscaping, which may not be the case uh, when we go on to item number three there. So, uh, board, uh, what about item number two here on the plan, the splitting of the trash... Uh, receptacles and creating two and a, uh, allowing for that existing door to exit out now onto the parking lot. Are we okay with, with that? Bill? Yeah, I, 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 I think there's an unfortunate loss of landscaping, considerable amount of landscaping. Um, I, I would prefer that the, the, the gates to the trash enclosure face the driveway and have that extra landscaping pocket rather than more concrete. Jim, how would that work for you? I think it would work functionally. I don't think architecturally it's nearly as good as having the block come across because and have the doors hidden, mm -hmm. not hidden, but to right trash. angle to the block. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. We would be looking yeah. at. No, I thought about that, but okay. take back at the picture. One picture back, David, please. There you go. It would still look like that, which I think is important. Okay, back, back, please. Okay. Mr. Lavoy is on the move. Uh, let's give him I'll a... I'll give him a microphone. There you are, sir. Thank you. So when you're standing here, you're looking at the gates. As I, yes, as I understand it. So the, the wall here, the gates here. So when you're approaching the building, you're going to see the gates, and you're going to see this concrete pad, and then you're going to see landscaping, and such as it is. If, if, if this is all we have, then it needs to be a lot more than just two left, palm trees left. So then perhaps we condition it to add some landscaping there. Todd, please. So can you go back to the drawing that shows the new trash receptacle area. No, go back to the uh, the plan view, I guess, that one. So, that one. So, can you not, why can't you flip the doors on the opposite side and put them where that all, where it says new door or end door? Why, why couldn't you put the gates on that side and you capture all that 
additional planted area that you want to concrete in, you hide the doors, you still have the block from the, the driveway side, and you double your planted area. We could look at that. Um, what we might have to do, uh, Todd, we might have to widen that a little bit to allow for conflicts with the door, but okay. it would be a better solution. It would save most of the landscaping. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's a good compromise. We could accept that. I think it would still look good, and uh, it would it would get the landscaping, keep most of the landscaping back in. That's a good idea. All right. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, so that let's uh, as we're looking at the drawing, that's item number two. Now let's look at number three: the addition of some grocery cart storage. Um, the height of the wall is four feet? Yes. Okay, the height of the wall is four feet, uh, and it sets back from the existing landscaping. Todd, I'm sorry, uh, David, please, if you'd go to the landscaping photograph of the one to the right of the front door, or to the right of the door of the BevMo. Okay, the one here on the right. Yes, no, David, that one, please. That wall would be right here, and it would maintain the whole, the whole length of the landscaping. We just take those these elements out and pull them forward. Okay, so then if we're going in this direction, I'd like to also add that some additional landscaping be added to that area. Um, so what is the board's thought on that? Keeping in mind, keeping in mind please, the, the condition of approval that is existing on this that the grocery cart stay inside. And ultimately, we would condition this, that if you approve the enclosure, it's subject to the Planning Commission removing the condition of approval Understood. on the cart okay. storage. All right. Can I, uh, Please. Can I yes. if I may, yes. Mr. Chair? Um, I see the landscape designer is here with us, shaking his head. Um, um, he's probably very much in favor of maintaining the existing material and not adding any new species or types and we think the existing material is very strong statement. Uh, we think a lot of that could be moved forward and tightened up a little bit and still look good. Uh, some of this is a little stressed, as you could see, due to the heat, but it'll, it'll come back. But our thought is to take some of those ones that are closer to the wall and move them forward and, uh, and maintain the type. Okay. Yeah, no, I if noticed that's okay. that yeah. Mr. Kopelk was in the audience and, and nodding. Nothing. All right. So um, he probably likes he probably likes your idea too. He likes well, Todd's I, idea. I like a lot. Todd's idea too. I, I um, and Jim, if you kind of think that that would work as well, put the yes. I think he. We he, can make it work. Yeah. All right. So um, <coughs> how do we feel, uh, Mr. Marsh? I don't mean to interrupt you. But it seems like you're taking some copious notes there. Are you planning on? Uh, it's just on the scope of work in general. Okay. Do you have anything to add at this time? No. Any questions of the? Uh, Could you turn your mic on, Mr. Marsh? Yeah, the openings uh, appear to be okay. I haven't focused on the landscape elements yet. Okay. All right. But any further questions of the applicant at this time? All right. Can we? While I'm here, sure. can we talk to Mr. Burkett about his Please. problems, all, okay. yes. concerns? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to save it for once you left the table, but no. Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> no, please. Uh, we share your concern. <coughs> and we, um, we did a sample uh, shield to some of the lighting that's inside the BevMo, and it seems to be working. I went and looked at it. This was actually a year ago. Uh, we had some complaints from the hotel adjacent or across the way, and uh, we put a hood over a, uh, about a four-foot section of the light, mm -hmm. and that light effectively is shielded with that hood. And uh, uh, we didn't take it any further uh, at the time. Uh, uh, Bevmo was reticent about spending the money and that sort of thing. Uh, we might be able to convince Bevmo if we could give them some shopping carts outside. Uh, that that they would come back to the table with some lighting. We're willing to take up that conversation. Uh, I've talked to uh, Hal about it, and he's okay with it too, about having that conversation with him. And I think it would promote, uh, you know, a good neighbor attitude and that sort of thing. We're we're aware of that. But let's keep in mind, um, this building was originally designed with clear story windows all around it. And, uh, and, and my recollection, and I grew up here, those were always lighted in some fashion that was 
that was meant that way for those roofs to float. That's the way the architect designed them. And there will be some light coming out of those clear stories uh, at some point. And I, you know, I think we can only try to uh, uh, minimize glare, right. but, but they're going to be lighted. And I'm, let's not misunderstand that. Jim, and I'm 100% with you on that. Yeah. I'm 100% yeah. with you on that. But there's a difference between the clear story being lit as opposed to being a, a source of lighting. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So um, the interior lighting that that is questioned now, is that considered a tenant improvement? Yeah. It is, yes. Okay, good. Um, with this photograph here, with all due respect to everybody in the room, it's this exterior, what I would call security lighting, that I find even more objective objectionable than the um, interior lighting. Is it a requirement? Is it a requirement from the city to have a certain amount of lighting or this style of lighting? Um, because what I'm thinking of, it, it certainly is perhaps compatible with a grocery store, but as a more respectfully, sophisticated tenants move into the building, um, this lighting is well, perhaps a little too institutional to me. Is there anything that we can do to lessen that lighting? Because it's really, it's, it's bright, it's in your face, it's, it's not very friendly lighting on this historic building in this otherwise historic neighborhood. I can't promise because, but we could look at it. Um, one of the problems we have is a code requirement to maintain a one-foot candle of light out in the parking lot. Uh, we're having a very difficult time doing that with the existing 1958 lighting that's out there now. Uh, we changed all the lamps in it to try to get it better. Uh, originally, I think those were sodium lamps, which were awful, uh, orange color, mm -hmm. whatever. We changed them, and we got a little more light. But uh, I, uh, I, we have to maintain a certain light level. These lights aren't just lighting near the entry. They're throwing light out onto that driveway, I know. Which, uh, which we need. So, um, uh, you know, uh, I can only comment that I would share your concern and we can look at it. I think it's a legitimate concern. Uh, um, maybe at some point when we get some tenants in this building and we can, uh, we can spend a little time and maybe a little money, we could look at some bollards or something like that that might do something a little more sensitive. Uh, those are just things we could look at, and okay. uh, be happy to come back to this board if, with a with a yeah. proposal when that happens. But right now, our problem, and not a problem, our concern is to get the building uh, uh, get the building leased up. Yeah, and uh, it's it's a significant drain on a monthly basis, and, and we don't want it to be that way. It's uh, <sighs> this building needs to be uh, needs to be filled up, and I, I I appreciate your thoughts on that, and I appreciate your your uh, your help. All, all along the way, it's been much appreciated to be able to get this done. So, Jim, on a if we if we looked at the lighting on a uh, two phases, the interior lighting of Bevmo, that is easier to install a shield. I don't know if it's easy. Uh, it, it's doable. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to allow the board to weigh in on this a little bit more before I ask for a motion, but I think I'd like to see something that conditions the softening of the interior lighting of the BevMo as a part of what we're doing today, and then hopefully rely on you in the future to to do something with the exterior lighting to still maintain the city's code, okay. et cetera. I'll go take my seat. And I just, uh, in all fairness to Mr. Stone, uh, I was there the same day he was. And in fact, BevMo did insist that they were going to keep the carts inside. Uh, I know about that whole thing. I know sure. about the, the agreement and the condition and all that. But I'm trying to solve a problem here now. We've got golf uh, shopping carts out in the parking lot yeah. that aren't being put away. And they're probably not being put away because they don't like them in front of their products inside right. uh, you know I'm just trying yeah. to solve something. well I think I think Dick really used the term uh, facilities or 
it's it's a it's it's we need it's an operational an operation an operational. operational issue. Okay, so board, your thoughts now, please, Todd. So I um I want to take an opportunity to commend the owner for their amazing restoration of the building and having sat here when all this was done. Yeah. For me, uh, I hearing it though. well, but yeah. he might be. Yeah, okay, Maybe good. he's out there. Go ahead. <laughs> he's right there. <laughs> well, yeah. he'll never mind. <laughs> Guys, it, yeah, I mean, just finish your talk because Todd is. I'm uh, commending yeah. you on yeah, the sensitive restoration you, so of the oh. the building. <laughs> but so no no so but but point is um, it, it's imperative that we make these buildings functional yes. if they're if if we are going to request and demand that they adaptively restore and allow to reuse the buildings we need to make them functional and so for me that's compromise and so uh, do I want to see this done no I'd rather have it left the way it was but Robinson's doesn't want to move back in the building it's not going to happen mm -hmm. so three or four other properties or businesses might and I think we need to make it effective for those three or four or five other businesses and part of that is compromise and if the carts need to go on the outside and the trash bins need to go on the outside to me in the grander scheme of things we're altering like such a minute part of this building and we've captured 95 or 98 percent of it has been amazingly restored and so it's still a gift even though we're faced with this sort of maybe bit of a compromise so I support the plan um, I would like to make it conditional upon fixing the lighting on the inside uh -huh. and it sounds like there is something of a solution that if you build these channels around the interior lights that might resolve it now I don't know that that's it but I'm um, I personally am fine with what's being proposed but I would like to see something fixed with the, with respect to the lighting on the inside and how it affects the outside Todd, and on that note, Jim, you can come back up front. You can come back up, please. Uh, I was aware of the shield over this four-foot length, and I drove by it the other night, and it does make a significant difference. And if it were applied to the entire lighting of the BevMo, I think it's going to bring the whole light down. You won't be seeing it this way. You'll only see it when you're in the store. It, it's gonna. I believe it's gonna do what it's it's supposed to do. So, uh, I just need to, I'm sorry. please. I just need to add one thing. Uh, again, my earlier comment about the other spaces. Those clear story lights, clear story windows will be uplit, uplit or whatever. Uh, uh, we want to make sure that we're, whatever condition you apply applies to the Bevmo situation now as it, as it relates to the give of the yes. sh shopping cart. I, I can't impose conditions on uh, spaces that we haven't designed yet, but we're, I think we're real clear about what we're trying to do. Yes. And uh, 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 Hal is sensitive to that as, as I am, uh, but we have a certain amount of light that's going to have to happen for these spaces. Some of them are eating establishments, some might be retail. They'll require some lighting, so just so everybody's no, I'm, I, I think we're, we're all trying to cooperate here, and if, if something comes up that we need to come back, we'll come back. You okay. Know? All right. Thank you. All right. No, thank you, Jim, again for that. All right. So, Todd, um, did you want to formulate a, a motion? Well, no. I'd like to hear from some other. Okay. Um, I think All right. Is a difficult situation. I don't know. You go ahead. All right. Well, while well, they're formulating, Todd, I agree a hundred percent. Oh, you're. Todd, oh my goodness. I agree a hundred percent. I don't have to think anymore. Um, I really. Uh, I think everybody knows how strong I feel about this lighting. Um, but I also, I'm an operational guy. I had, that's my background, uh, my original background. And I do understand how important it is. And that's why I like the idea, and I so appreciate the, the uh, cooperative attitude of the, um, of the developer, owner, and also of the architect. Um, and uh, we, the board, we have to be reasonable when we designate these buildings that they've got to operate. Their whole idea is to repurpose them. So um, I'm very much in favor uh, if we can, um, that we approve the um, operational aspects of the, of the trash and the carts um, with the uh, understanding or the stipulation, whichever we want to put it, about the lighting being addressed. And they already have 
come up with a, a, a solution. So I would um, very much uh, be in favor of that. Uh, and now I'd really like to see what uh, Member Lavoie would have to say about <laughs> <laughs> all of this. Well, well, I'm thinking like an interior designer. Um, <laughs> what, 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 if, what if there was a screen behind the clear story, say like three feet behind the clear story, that, that was like black sunshade? That, that would dampen the glare. I mean, the, the issue is glare, not light so much. Light bleeding out of those is really very attractive on the building. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you're seeing the source of light and it's bright. Right. So if you were to hide a drape, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. or, or shade, three feet behind the glass so it wouldn't be right up against it, um, drop down just the height of... of the perimeter of the clear story, would, would that solve the problem without having to go through and shield every light fixture in the building? Um, that might build the bill. Um, Dan, I see you're getting ready to have some. <laughs> this is think really taking, going completely against the character of the way that these buildings were designed. You were supposed to see front to back across those clear stories. And if you start blocking them three feet back, we're changing what the original concept of these buildings are. It really needs to be addressed on the lighting per unit. We know what glare is caused by putting the fixtures too high. If those fixtures had just been lowered, which we've also talked about, I think that would also work. But I think putting a block so you don't see clear through to the building is changing what the architect intended from the beginning. The only thing about that is that there, uh, there's a, a vast difference in the operation uh, from what it was as a beautiful um, high fashion store to a, um, a whole different purpose, obviously, with, with BevMo. So I think we always have to take in consideration what are we dealing with as far as the, probably as far as the tennis concerned. But that's a very interesting point that you make about that. But what are your feelings about that, Bill? Well, if, if, the, the, um, if the light fixtures are dropped below the clear story, um, there, there's, I mean, when, when you design light fixtures, you sort of like put them in the ceiling and you figure how, what the spread is. Right. When you drop them yep. down, you're losing and you may need more. So, um, you know, uh, uh, as I remember the story, it, it, there's quite a few light fixtures. So, um, and, and they want it to be a certain brightness for merchandising. Um, What? I, 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 you know, it, it, it's, I, I think at this point that um, it, it, we, ne we need to let the tenant um, solve the problem. Um, and the carrot would be that we would allow these extra trash enclosures. Right. And, um, That's what makes sense. Yeah. I, I, and, I, I and, agree. And, that makes total you know, sense. Let, I want to be let very them solve the problem. We have, we have identified the problem. Let their lighting engineers solve the problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd like to, uh, I would like to condition this, though, that the lighting in the BevMo store be addressed. Um, and there is a sample. One of the light fixtures does have this shield on it. And it, when I drove by it the other night, I, it, it caught my attention. I almost thought one of the bulbs had burned out. Oh, well, if you good. follow me, yeah, mm -hmm. because I was looking at this line of light going, and then it was, it felt like it burned out, like an old neon tube would burn out. But no, as I got closer, so Jim, you have installed something as an as a sample right. or something. So, I'd <coughs> I'd like to see that more fleshed out. As you said, make it the tenant's responsibility. Let them figure out the fix. Uh, and that's a suggested fix that the, that the architect has applied there. So um, 
I think finally. we're all on the on the lighting issue here and wanting that to be corrected, but it should be the tenant's responsibility. And I think as a negotiating tool, as a compromise to allow for the uh, grocery carts, uh, it's going to go back to the Planning Commission. They're going to look at this again. They're going to hear what we've said about the lighting. Um, I think it's. Uh, I think our work is done here, in my opinion. So, Mr. Chair, based on your discussion here today, you have uh, recommended approval of the new front door on the east elevation of the building. Yes. Relative to the trash enclosures, your recommendation is to approve those if you flip the access gates so they're facing each other uh, relative to that new back entrance door. And then third, relative to the shopping cart enclosure, you're recommending approval of the enclosure conditioned upon shielding the interior lighting in the BevMo space and then also contingent upon the Planning Commission approval of that condition of approval uh, that allows them to store the carts outside or the removal of that condition of approval. So that's what your discussion has entailed so far. So and, and just um, if those doors are flipped, we recapture that uh, landscape Very. space. Okay. Yeah. However, in looking at the photograph, where that door is that's going to exit the building, that currently does exit the building, there's certainly not enough room there to put a trash compact uh, trash uh, bin. So that wall that we're looking at in the left photograph is still going to come considerably south, but we're making it not so deep as to lose the landscaping. There, It will still maintain some landscaping adjacent to the door, mm -hmm. but the access to the trash will be in that new opening. Correct. Yes. Okay. I think we're all good on that. You don't need that concrete pad to be able to park the uh, can out. So that's it's the recapturing of that concrete pad that we're getting. Okay. Yeah. Most, most of it. it. Yeah. Most of it. Yeah. Mo yeah. Most of that concrete pad is what we're But I feel gain. like the entrance into the store is still welcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay. Um, all right. Um, any other? Thank you for that recap of what we've discussed. Uh, Mr. Marsh. And then uh, finally, how about introduction of new landscape areas in kind for those that are being going to be eliminated in, in the rear of the structure? I don't know where, where um, some additional air, uh, landscape could it, be added. It, I would it always would, ask it for would more landscaping. That some new landscape might be added at the corner of Barristo and um, at the corner of Barristo and Bellotto. And and similarly there there's a little bit of area <clears throat> where the Bebmo store is currently. So I mean there are uh, patches of new landscape that could be introduced where that which is going to be lost for the trash enclosures. Well, I'm always open to more landscaping, additional landscaping. I just don't know whether it's uh, practical here or where it might be or go or um, perhaps in, in the parking lot area. Uh, board, any other thoughts on Mr. Marsh's suggestion? Uh, I think it's important as landscape is removed, landscape area is removed from the front of, uh, from the back of the building, that the um, that the landscape material be intensified, that there be more of it rather than just taking it away. In so, the same area. In the same area. Okay. Um, okay. So. Uh, yeah, but so Mr. Chaffee is saying that yes, in, in these two areas that are impacted on the rear of the building that we are discussing today, um, where we lose landscaping, the existing landscaped areas get some intensified additional plant material. Mr. Marsh, does that does mm -hmm. that help? Okay, good. Uh, Flynn, did you get that on there as well? Yes, so yeah, okay. we will add right. that as a condition. Okay, so I think we've actually formulated a, 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 um, a motion, 
and um, anybody wants to sort of repeat it, or Lynn, can I rely on what you've captured there to be the motion? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna suggest that the motion is on the floor as just discussed, and I'll look for a second. Uh, okay, uh, I'll second it, uh, un and under discussion, do we wanna look at the um, a replacement fixture for the security lights? Well, so, so we have a first and a second, and uh, so now under further discussion, uh, more discussion on the security lighting. And yes, I could talk about it for, for a long time, but I'm relying on the architect and the owner of the building to stay in compliance with the city's lighting code. Um, and as they fill up the building with more tenants, that um, uh, additional lighting would be considered or changes to be con Bill, what are your thoughts on it? Um, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe I could jump in. Please. <laughs> what I would suggest is if we have future certificates of approval come forward for this building, that as a condition of approval, we ask the applicant to review the exterior lighting plan at that point in time. I like that. Okay. Um, Mr. Lavoie is in agreement on that, so thank you, Flynn. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Wonderful. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very good. Thank you very much. Um, anyone need a three-minute break? Nope? Okay, we'll press on. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, oh, uh, item 5C on our agenda. It's not actually on our agenda, but we have received materials. Um, Ken, staff report, please, on the um, request by Palm Springs Art Museum, Inc., for a certificate of approval for new signage on the east facade of the Palm Springs Art Museum building located at 101 Museum Drive, a Class One historic site. Mr. Ken, Chair please. and members of the board, again, Ken. thank you for adding this item to the agenda, and I apologize. We typically like to have the materials to you ahead of time, but unfortunately, because of the time frame in which we were working and the need to get this done, uh, we are, again, appreciative of you adding this item to the agenda. What is being requested is to install new uh, wall signage on the east face of the museum building as you can see in the illustrations that you have in your packet there on sheet one. What is being proposed is to install reverse channel letters that would be aluminum letters painted a dark bronze color so that they match the aluminum frames of the windows and the doors on the exterior of the building. The overall area of the lettering, as you can see, extends approximately 60 feet across the face of the facade. The letters would be 36 inches in height. Uh, the idea is that with the construction of Museum Way, we now have an access clearly from Palm Canyon to the museum. Uh, previously, it has always been hidden by the Desert Fashion Plaza Mall, and so this gives them much greater visibility. And consequently, in order to have signage that's appropriate relative to its context and its location relative to Palm Canyon, the size of the letters being requested, meet that need to give the museum the visibility that it is requesting. In terms of our code requirements, I just noted in the report that it does require a variance from our sign regulations. In the central business district, sign area for wall signs is limited to 50 square feet. This significantly exceeds that. However, again, based on the use and its specific location, staff would recommend approval of that. That's a separate item that will go to the planning commission later. In terms of the construction of the letters and its impact to the historic resource, any wiring would be mounted behind the concrete facade, so it would not have any visible exposed uh, conduit or junction boxes or things like that on the east face of the structure itself. Um, I gave you in your backup package just some images of what the previous signage has been. Um, there's an image uh, before they installed the sculpture, and then there's also, you can see in one of the images, what the original signage was when it was built in 1976 and had a different name as the uh, Desert Museum. 
Um, so again, that's my presentation to you. The applicant and the sign contractor are here. If you have questions for them, that concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to take your questions as well. Again, thank you. Um, Flynn, thank you. It lights up? It lights up from the back at night? Yes, it okay. is halo illuminated, so it's not clear face, but uh, it has the, the... It's backlit. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, board, uh, any questions of staff? Okay, thank you, Flynn. Uh, comments? Dan. I think from Palm Canyon, this will look wonderful. And it will guide people to the museum. And right now, it's a blank facade. Uh, we're at the museum every week. And I'm very familiar with what it looks like. I think the scale of it looks good. I think it'll be subtle from Palm Canyon. And it will draw people to the museum. Just so people know, on the free museum nights, like Thursday, because my husband's a docent there, during the Warhol show, there were 1,000 people that came to the museum. Every docent in the city was on call. So it's a great resource for the city. And to let it be known from Palm Canyon that this is how you go down Museum Way now, I think this is a great addition. Uh, Flynn, um, will the second sign remain as well, the sign behind the sculpture? Okay. Correct, it will. All right. Any, your light's gone on. Mr. Lavoie. This signage is unworthy of a public building. <laughs> Why don't we put a great big billboard on the freeway so that people can find it? As, as Dan just said, I don't, particularly with the opening of, of the access, uh, the access to the to the museum, uh, 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 people will be able to find it. They can find it when it was buried in back of the Fashion Plaza. It's a, it's an important public civic building. This signage would be appropriate on Bevmo, not on an art museum. Todd. I'll go next. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. So um, I, I can't agree more. We now have this street that opens up the site of vision right into the front door, and you can see it from the sidewalk. You've got an amazing building to look at that, you know, light the sculpture, make the sculpture show off. Um, uh, this solution by itself is great. Um, I think redoing that so the sculpture doesn't block half half the name is a great thing to do. But um, uh, I think there's a reason why there's a 50 square foot requirement, maximum size of signage, and this is like 75% bigger than it should be. Um, I just I, I think it's dopey. And not in a good way. <laughs> not in a good way. Not like a like an elephant, no, that would be Dumbo, um, like a, a dwarf. Um, no, I, I, uh, I, I think you've got a beautiful, sophisticated building, um, and the one sign that's right behind the sculpture near the fountain or the pool is great, but um, you certainly don't need both. Um, and uh, anyway, I can't support this. Um. I feel it lacks the sophistication that the building, you know, sort of already commands. Um, so I'm not, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling uh, the appeal. It, it, it feels just too strong of a sign, too, too commercial of a sign. Um, so, Dick, Vincent, leave it up to you guys here for further comment. Yeah, this is a tough one in, in one respect and another respect it isn't, as Bill and, and Todd brought up. Um, the applicant, I mean, I think is here. Um, maybe we should, would be, the good, nice thing to do is to have them come and explain why they think that this is really necessary to go to this extreme. Um, but um, it seems like uh, it has been addressed that the, there is so much visibility now and the building is so strong as it stands architecturally into itself. Does the sign really um, 
you know, is it really going to have a, an additional impact to warrant um, having it? So I would sort of like to hear from the applicant and just see how they feel about this and what they're, you know, why they think that it's important to go to this extreme. And I think the applicant should come forward. Uh, Vincent, did you want to add anything at this juncture? No. All right, thanks. Good morning, and thanks for your patience. Please introduce yourself. Uh, good morning. I'm Jeb Bonner. I'm the Deputy Director and Chief Financial Officer for the Palm Springs Art Museum. First, thank you for taking up this uh, item uh, at the last minute. Um, we recognize that, uh, well, our goal here was to actually uh, find signage that would uh, be well seen from Palm Canyon Drive, which is actually a considerable distance away from the museum. Um, certainly when people are at the museum, they are frequently not even sure what the building is. That small sign that's by the sculpture and the fountain, or now reflecting pool, is frequently not seen until people are just there. So we deal with an awful lot of visitors who can't find us. Um, we were trying to come up with a typeface that would be consistent with the building, would uh, last for um, many, many years, that we were not looking for something that would be um, dated, uh, that was consistent with the building. Um, so those are the, sort of the, the key things that we were looking at. We worked with um, uh, Leo Marmel, who is the chair of our Building and Grounds Committee, with Brooke Hodge, who is our, curator, our director of architecture and design, uh, and certainly with Sydney Williams, uh, who has done much of her work on uh, Easter Williams architecture and is with the Williams family. So that was how we reached this uh, solution to the signage issue. So were the, these individuals that you mentioned, which are all very high, high profile people in the community, of course, they, they are supportive of this new proposal? Y this, yes, this, this did go. Yes, it went through our Building and Grounds Committee, which is chaired by Leo Marmel. Uh, we had actually shown this to Sydney Williams, and I think in the cover letter that has uh, come with the materials to you, we have a quote from uh, Sydney that she and Eric fully support the size and scale of it. Um, so we, we felt that we had actually um, covered our bases in, in getting uh, as much uh, input as we could. Um, Jeff, if you hold that thought for me, is there such a letter of, of I don't see it here in my packet. Let me run and get it. All right. Um, yeah. Um, thanks for that. Uh, and again, I know we received all of this very last minute. And um, so uh, I've got two additional copies. So let me. All right. Well, and, and Flynn's gone back to his office. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So, Mr. Chair, please. Ken. Um, I'm listening to the board's concerns on this, and uh, the one comment that um, Mr. Bonner just mentioned was that they were looking for a consistent typeface with the building. And yet, you know, this typeface that's from the original sign is, is really quite uh, period specific. This is a typeface that you would often see, and Bill Firmer can disprove this if I'm correct with a building of the era that this building was built. And I'm really surprised that the museum is not seeking to uh, actually do what he's saying, is to maintain a typeface that is consistent with the building. If it were this typeface on that sign on the upper fascia, it might, it might be more harmonious with the architecture of the building. The typeface that's shown seems commercial, um, in my opinion. Maybe that would help. Uh, if you saw a type, uh, a font that was reflective of the original font, might the board find that more palatable? Well, you know, um, while we're waiting for Flynn to come back, um, looking at the historic photographs also, the signage was always intended to be there in that area where the fountain is. Now, the, the fountain has changed over time, and, the, and a sculpture has, has entered the, the picture there. Uh, we do have one copy of it here, Flynn, so thank you. Uh, Ken had one, or, or Mr. Bonner actually had one. So the letter is actually from, uh, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. It's, of course, it's from uh, Elizabeth Armstrong. Uh, quite. Jeff, you got my attention when you mentioned Eric and Sidney Williams, mm -hmm. heir apparent mm -hmm. to 
the, the, uh, and so uh, we'll come back to the letter in just a minute. Um, so, uh, and, and I think it's, a, it's an interesting um, point to be made that uh, an earlier font, the original location for the signage, um, even the existing signage, the new signage is in that same area. Uh, why not keep it in that area? Um, you know, I think, Jeff, the challenge of attracting attention from Palm Canyon Drive, which is probably several hundred feet, a, a football field length, or if not more, that's a big, big challenge to try to fill. Uh, so maybe it's, 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 it's overreaching. It might be just overreaching, but I'll come back to the, to the board. Todd, please. Let me ask a question. Why, why, why was in the conversations that took place, why was there thought to be a need to have two identical signs saying the exact same thing right next to each other? Well, I think one was actually is much easier to be seen by pedestrians as they're walking by, by the fountain, and the larger one for uh, uh, people in cars and from Palm Canyon Drive. So I think that at a certain point, um, we uh, might consider removing that lower one, but because of the way you look up from various angles, I think uh, it's not inappropriate to have two signs there. Uh, so I, I definitely don't think you need both. Um, and, and I certainly understand in looking at the uh, original signage, you've got dark lead, lead letters on a relatively light background, which make it a very effective signage uh, uh, the way it is. And uh, I get that the sculpture went in and the sculpture blocks the sign, so that created the problem. Um, but I agree with Ken that the original font would it be a more, for me, it'd be a more desirable solution. Um, and it going up on that new wall above the doorway, above the entry, you know, is kind of an interesting evolution of the original sign, but um, it's at least 50% too big. The, uh, the earlier signs were in Euro-style bold. And when we actually did mock-ups, we did mock-ups of this is in Gotham, Gotham medium, and we did it in Euro style bold. Those those early signs in uh, Euro style bold throw an awful lot of shade, and they actually can be very difficult to read, even in the small type, uh, small sizes that we have elsewhere in the museum. This uh, this sign that is down by the pool is Gotham itself. It's a it's a thinner Gotham than what is proposed up above, with the exception of the E, which was uh, modified because of uh, that was at that point they were trying to mirror the sign with the museum's logo. So we were trying to not uh, create a museum logo that becomes signage. We wanted something that would last longer than that. So that's why we were not mimicking that earlier sign. You know, it, it's interesting when you think about the visibility from, that's a very small view shed going on that tunnel going to, to the museum. Um, if it was a much wider spread, I could see it having even much more impact. But I'm, until you're right on that view shed, and that's always been one of my concerns about the whole, the, the, the whole plan downtown, but it's very narrow. And, you know, it's, is it worth going to this extreme or, I mean, you really have to be right almost dead front in that to see uh, down to the museum. I still don't think it's, and there's nothing we can do about it, I still don't think it's wide enough view shed for, you, for the museum, and I'm a huge supporter of the museum. So I, I joined the museum when I moved here 13 years ago, the third week I was here. Thank so, you. So uh, I consider it my second home. Um, but I'm just wondering if this is not like an overkill to begin with when that small view shed is, is there. Um, so I think that's another thing to take into consideration. And back to the scale, um, and, and if it were in the font that, that staff uh, re, you know, mentioned, um, I don't know if it would make enough difference if it were brought back into, you know, more into scale rather than the, the three feet, I think that it is now. 
would that would that be more compatible or would that still not be appropriate in in uh, Mr. Lavoie and, and Mr. Hayes' eyes? Um, I, I'd be curious to to um, to know if the um, architectural renderings for the design of the building show signage and where they show it um, would be my first uh, preference. I'm assuming that the original signage um, was probably where the architect wanted it. Bill, um, I think for purposes of our discussion, here is the photo of the original signage when it was the Palm uh, Palms right, of about. Springs Desert Museum. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that I think we would the, refer to as the original. It's opening right. day. Yeah, okay. Then, right. then, then that is probably more where and what the, the right. designing architect had in mind. Um, the, 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 to me, what's proposed is just too commercial, both in its location and in its style. Um, this is an art museum, right? There are artists involved. Why weren't they involved in the design of a sign that's a piece of art on this building? And maybe it's sticking above the parapet. Maybe it drapes over the parapet. Maybe it becomes this thing that's more interesting than a Costco sign. Bill, and I, and I appreciate that further input. Um, Jeff, perhaps you know, uh, the signage that exists now located behind the, the, yes. the, the mm -hmm. sculpture. Was that not created by Gary Wexler? Yes, it was. OK. Mm -hmm. So to your point, Bill, there was some artistic input on the existing sign. I think, I think what we're wondering is it, it, this one seems to lack some artistic input. It is feeling commercial just commercial. Um, and it is the Arts Museum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any other questions of, of staff or our applicant? Um, I'm going to look for a motion from the board. The, suge the uh, staff suggestion is to uh, approve the certificate of approval subject to the following conditions. A waiver or variance from the sign area and height limitations shall be approved by the Planning Commission prior to the installation of the proposed signage. So that's the staff's recommendation. Um, I'm taking the temperature of the board and feeling it's unacceptable. So. Um, we should either get a motion to accept the staff's recommendation to approve the certificate of approval or to outright uh, deny it. Mr. Chair? Please. Um, I, I would recommend, or I would, I would move um, that we return the application to the applicant um, and suggest that they um, um, be inspired more by the building and a less commercial um, and more artistic solution to the problem. Okay. So the motion then is to deny the application. Yes. Well, no. It's no. To, it's to return it to 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 the applicant to resubmit a more artistic. Design. Let me just clarify. <laughs> <laughs> the motion is to deny the application as presented and to encourage the applicant to come back. I just want to make sure that it's clear in terms of the action. Bill, it it, it is what. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> All right. Can we get a second on that motion? All right, Mr. Burkett's a second on that. And then under discussion, yes, please. Th that the proposal is unworthy of a public building and a building of this stature. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Okay, so Mr. Kaiser is opposed. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for your patience in, in sitting with us this morning.
Okay, um, that would have been 5C on our agenda. Moving on, uh, that completes our new business. We move on to discussions. Uh, 6, 6A, subcommittee reports. Um, and there not there aren't any actually subcommittee reports listed here, but I think that um, we definitely wanted to, uh, uh, Mr. Burkett, myself, and Ms. Dixon met with the library board over the courtyard of the Wellwood Murray Library, so we did have a, an official meeting with them. And Dick, do you want to take that over for me, please? Yes. Thank you. It was a very interesting meeting. Um, we learned um, that actually there had been no change um, from the existing um, plans that had been submitted. Uh, and I think what happened was, uh, they, in other words, our input had not been reflected at all. And evidently there was maybe some miscommunications um, between um, the, the uh, landscape architect receiving information um, to uh, make any of these changes, but it was quite obvious. And those changes that we had were looking for, particularly were those from the consultant that we had asked for with Mr. Keelan to um, have an input. So it was quite disappointing uh, as we started, and we were still dealing with the same uh, configurations that we were not happy with at all. However, there was considerable opposition um, by the other board, but I think over a period of discussions, we were able to substantiate that this board has a, a definite input on this project uh, because it was appearing that we were not uh, trying to be as polite as possible. Um, so we actually sent back the uh, make, making our recommendations uh, to go back and to uh, include those items and, and that it be reconfigured based upon Mr. Uh, Keel, particularly Mr. Keelan's uh, many, many uh, comments and suggestions that he um, had made. So um, I think that is where we are with it, and it's to come back to us for um, a rediscussion um, on it. We just, it was just so obvious that there was being no reference made to the history um, of the building um, whatsoever. And um, i just cite one example is the park benches being the same park benches that are being installed around the city. Um, however, there's a major difference in that this is an historical building. And it's not just a park bench in front of a new building. So that was just one example. And then there was a lot of, of discussion about the the layout of the, um, actually of the, the tile work that was to be installed on the patio. So I think we'll come back with a new, um, with a, a whole new set of uh, report, uh, findings to report to you. Well, and I was also uh, at the meeting and um, I would certainly for the board's edification commend Dick for taking really a strong position at that meeting and insisting that the input from the HSPB be, HSPB be considered um, and um, given its uh, due credit. Uh, we did ask, because there was so much discussion about landscape materials and plant material, that we did ask that it go to the AAC for their architect, uh, their landscape people to look at it. Um, can you would refresh my memory as to who the city official is that sat in on that meeting with us? Very. That was Tom Garcia. Yes, city Tom engineer. Garcia. Yes, and and Tom um, took 
lots of notes. We went through Mr. Keelan's um, recommendations one by one. We addressed every single one. Um, and uh, Tom took the minutes and that soon should still be distributed to us for our review. Uh, but it is in, it's still in process, and so it'll probably be a while, I think, before it comes back to us. But Dick's point, I want to reiterate, um, it's our task to oversee changes to this historic resource. And the patio area, the courtyard area, is as important, I think, as the building and the interior itself. And there was a sense that it should be new and shiny and almost mimic the new downtown so that it felt a part of it. And we were both, and Linda Dixon, I'm sorry Linda's not here this morning because she would certainly have additional input, said no, this should s be set aside. This should have a different feeling. This should have a different bench. Uh, Etc. So uh, it was a very, very good meeting. It was several hours long. And uh, so I'm thinking we're going to come back. We're going to hear about it again at a future date. Yes? Okay, good. All right. Um, I don't know that there are any other yeah. subcommittee reports. Yeah. Okay, there Dick, is I'm one, sorry. One, uh, just one other brief uh, one in reference to the uh, demo ordinance that we've been considering. The next meeting was rescheduled uh, for July 23rd which I'm very happy to say we'll be having um, that meeting. We made a lot of progress in the last one. And um, I think we're really looking uh, for this next meeting coming up 23rd, having substantial uh, headway from where, uh, where we can now start dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Uh, so we're well on our way with that. So that's July the 23rd. Correct, July 23rd at 10.30. If Mr. Priest has anything in advance of that meeting, I will go ahead and circulate that to you so you have an opportunity That'd be great. to review it. That'd be very it. helpful. So thank you. OK, and again, I don't know that there are any other subcommittee reports uh, for today, uh, aside from the library and the, uh, uh, the other one that, uh, that Dick just mentioned. Um, so that would conclude uh, our discussion under 6A, looking at 6B. Again, Dick, uh, 2019 National Preservation Month Symposium, not too soon. Okay. Um, I'd really like to start, we've always started rather early, but I'd really like to start early this year um, <clears throat> by um, appointing uh, the uh, subcommittee members for July uh, in, uh, for this meeting so that we can have a July, uh, our first meeting, organization meeting, uh, where I'd like to be able to explore and discuss with the subcommittee. Um, and also, I would very much appreciate, uh, we'd try to work around uh, Flynn's schedule, uh, because this initial meeting is really important, because I'd like to explore uh, ideas and suggestions uh, from a file that I've started actually back in April <laughs> of last year <laughs> uh, of going forward. Um, and Phil and I have had some discussions with that. So I would like to um, suggest, invite, and appoint if the board uh, would approve. Uh, we had a great team last year. Um, with uh, Dan and with Vincent and myself and Flynn. Um, and, uh, and, and having Flynn's input there really did help, uh, I think, so much. Um, because we were able to, rather than have wait till the next meeting to sort of get approval on things and also to get suggestions, um, it was very, very, very meaningful. And I understand maybe he can't attend all of them, but I got to tell you, last year, he was a real sport, and I think there was only one that maybe he might have missed at the last minute. So um, I would recommend that um, if we could have um, our same group, uh, our same team together this year, I would ask the board um, approval on that. 
I would ask if those members of the subcommittee from 2018 also serve on 2019. Mr. Marsh? Good. Is it Dan? Yeah, yeah Dan. Good. Okay, yes, yeah, so I think you have your committee. Okay, thank you very much. Is that it? I think that's it because we'll be discussing, I want to explore with the, uh, the team at that point these ideas and suggestions, and then when we come back in September, um, and then I have some ideas about expanding um, the uh, input from organizations, which I'll be discussing at that at our July meeting. Oh, and speaking of the July meeting, uh, in soliciting from Terry on Flynn's availability for July, uh, July 30th was his best day. And I know that Vincent, uh, I believe, is getting ready to go out of town after that. So if we could schedule something for the 30th uh, while everybody's here. Um, and when I checked yesterday, the schedule looked like it was pretty open on that one day. So if I could ask for the afternoon, uh, I do have a doctor's appointment at 11. So anytime from 1.30 on or at nine o'clock would be, uh, which would be best for the team. We could decide on that and then we can have that set. Bonnie. You okay? I, I'm good either in the morning or the afternoon. So 9 a.m. or else 1.30 p.m. Both of those times okay. would work Dan, for me. any difference with you, whether it's 9 or 1.30? 1.30 would be fine. 1.30? Is that good with you? Either one. Let's do 1.30 then. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Do you want to do it oh, yeah. That's yeah, great. Our housekeepers are gone by 1.30. <laughs> okay. That's good. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, excellent. Thank okay. you very much for that. All right. And then that concludes our discussion 6B. We'll turn to board member comments. Anyone? I would just ask, uh, Ken, uh, the Cornelia White House uh, start date, the video that we have had a hand in, um, any update at all for us? Uh, I don't have an update. I was back in the office yesterday after being gone for a couple of weeks, of and I need to follow up with uh, Mike Lytar in the okay. engineering department, which I will bring you uh, that update next month. All right, excellent. Um, any other board comments? Dick, please. Um, on the La Plaza Theater, any, any update? <laughs> no, I haven't had any update from Mayor Pro Tem Roberts. Um, I should be seeing him in a week or two on other topics. I'll try and bring that up in terms okay. of Wonderful. when he would like to get back together. Yeah, that'd be great. And um, on the Racket Club, um, I just thought if there, I know there are still some members that are not at a site visit. Or could that be arranged like in September or so we could get that underway? Yes. We haven't had any recent contact with the individuals who are contemplating purchasing the property, but when we do, we'll go ahead and request that we have additional visits at that point in time. Okay. And um, class one plaques. I would like to get a big hurrah for staff. Um, the... There are several plaques that were installed uh, in the last few weeks. And the buzz around those plaques on social media was very, very, very powerful, very strong. And people, you would think we were giving away uh, a uh, Rolls Royce or <laughs> a Maserati. Dick, um, can you tell us which plaques you're referring to? Particularly I'm in the, the dark. two that I know of are the Orbit Inn and also oh. uh, La Serena. And I was going to ask Ken if he could let us know what the other plaques were uh, in addition to that. The marker at Takwitz Plaza has been installed. Oh. The marker on the uh, Catherine Mailer House, I believe, is being installed this week. We have um, confirmed for installing the marker at the uh, William Holden Depot Estate. And wow. we have several others that are uh, waiting to be installed, just getting them into the queue with facilities. So. I've been working furiously to try to build, get this backlog down, and little by little, I know little by little, we are whittling it well, away. Well, no, I'll say that's that's. So. I just noted six. That's pretty good, Ken. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's more that's... piled up behind my door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, this is this is really powerful, and 
And speaking of that, I'd, I'd like for us to um, actually capitalize on these designations a little more because they are so important. Um, the, uh, one way we could do it, I'd just like to make some suggestions out there, is maybe honoring um, uh, the recipients uh, at the event by sending them a special invitation from the city uh, at our event and that, you know, during our awards uh, presentations that we make this a part of it. Um, we could, um, and then maybe we could have a photo group of, of them. Um, and also, um, I, I'd also think that a, actually an article in the Valley Voice or, your, or under your turn in the Desert Sun when the plaques are installed or at the time of designation, I'd be very happy to work with staff in, in writing something for that. I just think we could, I'd just like to see us become more and more visible throughout the community. I think it will help support along the way. And these designations, I mean, it's one of the most important things that we do, I think. So, I'd just like to see us capitalize on that. So maybe that's what we could consider. Well, and I'm hearing Dick too. I mean, and, and I agree. Um, it makes what we do very tangible. It gives it a, it gives it a plaque. I mean, and that's pretty, uh, you know, that's pretty great. Uh, whatever you say, yes, yeah, and, I think that. And um, I think that um, if we could, and I know this is a big task for, particularly for Ken, um, and I want to be respectful of that, but if we could sort of at least shoot for a goal of like six months as an example, I don't, you tell me if that's even realistic or not, after a designation is made, uh, once you get caught up, <laughs> I understand, <laughs> going forward, um, because it is, it's really, I, you know, I didn't realize until I heard from some of these folks, like, would you please let me know when we're going to get our plaque? That it really is a very, very, very important thing. Yeah. The other one I forgot to mention is Mr. Hayes on the second of oh, the yeah. um, uh, another one homes that he's worked at the Bell Vista track was installed. And yes, I'm very aware. People view these like they're receiving an Academy Award. Yeah. Yes, yes. And they're significant and the the thing that I think is important is that really does extend the board's uh, mission of education to the community. So when you walk by these buildings, you see the marker, and the marker right. explains a little bit about what its significance is. So I think it's reasonable once I can get myself right. caught up. And I'm really back. close. <laughs> I've <laughs> appreciated your patience on this. I'm really close to getting the backlog done, um, and it is not an unreasonable request to get them installed within right. six months of a designation. Okay, very good. Thank and I you. I can work with you on any other special uh, events we want to do. You know, just uh, been, I'm sorry, uh, notionally. I was say, the only other comment I was going to make is um, we could <coughs> certainly coordinate uh, with uh, Amy Blaisdell here in the city's communications yeah. department. Uh, I know in some cases, um, uh, I think it was Royal Hawaiian, uh, because the architect was still alive at the time, uh, we did a fairly formal presentation, I believe, through PSPF, mm -hmm. Gary, was that mm -hmm. orchestrated? So there are different ways we can celebrate the um, installing of these markers, and I can talk with you about that offline. Yeah. All right. Um, and since Robinsons was here today, have they received? Has is there is the Robinsons building plaqued? Yes, the marker on that went up a little while ago. It's located on the east side near the base or the bottom of the handicap ramp. Oh, that's another one. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, I'll look for it next time I'm in the area. All right. Um, any other board member comments or? Uh, please, Hi. Vincent. Oh, sorry, Dick. I'm sorry. Um, just with respect to the racket club, I noticed that the signage says that it's still in escrow. So sure. it hasn't transferred yet. So maybe that's why there hasn't been any um, activity with the owners, potential owners and sponsors. Um, I wanted to mention that I guess you all know that next year, the California Preservation Foundation Conference will be in Palm Springs from May 7th to May 10th. And there's a call for uh, sessions for the conference. And I was thinking that we could do a session on um, 
on the comprehensive survey that's currently underway to go to the city council maybe by next year it'll be <laughs> it'll be actually come we've to fruition we've already uh, conditioned that by the end of this year okay we did we conditioned so it that. might be appropriate to do a session on that i'd be happy to be a moderator for that session with the consultant <laughs> and staff and uh board members uh, is something for consideration um let's see well, the preservation symposium was already mentioned um i guess that's all, all of my comments at this point all right thank you uh, uh, vincent so the uh, cpf california preservation um foundation uh did hold uh, their very first meeting here about a week or 10 days ago a lot of uh uh, parties were included at the table. There were a lot of people. Flynn was here, there. Um, uh, Ken, you should know I volunteered you to do your uh, PowerPoint <laughs> presentation on, on Class 1s and, and the Mills Act. Uh, it, it's going to be a great, great, great three-day event, and uh, we're going to all be called upon, I think, to be participating in that at some at some level. I was going to ask you, Mr. Chair, since I had to leave the meeting early, are, is there still a need for volunteers for the subcommittees? Did we get that far um, in the meeting? Yes. Yes, they sent around a, a sheet and we all signed up for yes. Okay. And, and again, Mr. Marsh bringing up the call for sessions I think is also critical. If any yeah. of you have ideas for sessions, please submit those. Yes. Um, since yeah. it's here in Palm Springs, yeah. we need to be well represented in terms of the work that you all do here. So. Right. And we all have a hand in it somehow. So maybe the board takes on an assignment each to do you know something. Um, as they interact with you, um, this call to sessions and programming and volunteers. Could you perhaps distribute to the board? Yes, absolutely. We'd be happy to do that. Because so then Todd could sign up for... <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. only so that we're kind of in yeah. it early, in it early, because it's going to take quite a bit of planning. Yes, it will. All right, good. All right, um, please. Um, do we, are there any updates on the orchid tree and cork and bottle? Uh -huh. Oh. oh, boy. <laughs> Orchid tree. Yeah. <laughs> Orchid tree is looking like they're coming up against their expiration date in terms of their zoning entitlements, November of 2018. So they neither, e either need to mm. extend those entitlements or else they lose those entitlements. I know that they have been in discussions about possibly incorporating uh, additional properties into the complex. They've also looked at potentially saving more of the structures on the site as part of that plan. So there has been some discussions with us. However, they haven't gotten to the stage where they've submitted things for building permits yet. So that's where they are. Again, we appreciate those who have called into code enforcement wherever you see that there are openings in the fence or things like that. Please, again, as you see those things, report them. But that's where we are with the orchid tree. On the cork and bottle, we had originally had that property uh, in escrow for sale. Uh, it has fallen out of escrow. They are now opening that up to new buyers. And I apologize, I can't recall what our discussion was that at the last city council meeting, but I have had a couple of inquiries coming in to look at the building as in terms of what uses may be appropriate for that building and uh, also having an understanding of its class one designation and what that means. So we are looking for new buyers for that property. I, 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 I thought that at a recent city council meeting it was transferred. The sale was transferred. The city did sell it to... No, they allowed, they extended the time period to make offers on the building. Okay. Okay. There yeah. was, I believe, a complaint about the process, uh, and some individuals had requested additional time to put together a proposal, okay. and so Could city it, council yeah, yeah. allowed them to do that. Yeah, but it was, uh, I remember seeing it on a council agenda. Okay, any other board member comments? No? Yes. All right. Please, oh, do you want to bring up historic, uh, the tennis club? Oh, yes, no, thank you. So uh, 
we, I did assign a subcommittee for the, uh, to assist in the historic resources survey of the historic tennis club district. And it was Dick and, no, no. okay, yes. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay. Thank then you. I think it was uh, my understanding um, after um, discussions with, uh, with Ken that um, I think they had, a, they had a very good idea that actually their, uh, the, original, the origination of this uh, to the association would be uh, through the city sending a letter. Um, and that would be a better way to approach this as the very beginning. Uh, so we still, and I sort of just backed off until, so if we could maybe have that by September? Uh, actually, you'll be? have that before September. Ken. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what he said. Um, and the, after I'd had conversations with you, I'd had conversations with Flynn about how to sort of launch this in a way. Right. And I think what we would like to do is kind of bring the action forward in terms of this was an action of the HSPB, present that to the right. Neighborhood Association, and then allow some of the board members in the subcommittee to begin talking about that in, in concert with that, but that we would help you with that letter that says here was an action of the city's board. We're now moving these actions forward to begin the discussion, so that's the thought that okay. came out okay. of that. Okay, sounds good. good. That sounds good. All right. Um, seeing no further board member comments, I'd ask for staff. Oh, I'm sorry, Vincent. I'm sorry. Um, just one other. Have we rescheduled the Palm Springs workshop with the uh, Office of Historic Preservation? Um, no, not at this time. I'm really waiting for them to come back and see what their schedules are looking like. Okay. Okay, staff reports or staff comments. Mr. Chair, at last month's meeting, there was a discussion about the Mesa Gatehouse. Oh, yes. And I have an update on that. In reviewing the location of the curb for the new house that's yes. being installed, sidewalk, etc., uh, the Engineering Services Department has determined that they can leave the Mesa Gatehouse in its existing location that will be able to move the curb on the other side of the gatehouse so that, again, it remains protected in its current location. So happy news on that regard. I don't want to have to move that structure. It is in the city right-of-way, and so ultimately the city is responsible for Good. it. But uh, again, it won't be impacted by the construction of the single-family house on the adjacent parcel. Excellent. And that's the only report that I have. I don't know, Mr. Lyon, if you have anything for the board. Okay. And I would just thank you for printing up the uh, the new vacant building ordinance. Uh, I'd like having a, a copy, so we all have that now. And again, I'll just reiterate what Dick has said earlier about code enforcement and how responsive code enforcement is. Um, it's, a, it's a tool that we have at our fingertips and we should take advantage of it when we see you know, things that are, are threatening to our historic resources. And, and especially for, for uh, Vincent and, and uh, Bill, uh, relative to the uh, racket club, of course, because you're in the area so often. Uh, so I don't have anything else. You don't have anything else? I, I just wanted to share with you, because you made those same comments last month, I shared those with uh, the code enforcement team, and they were so grateful to have comments like that because their job is a difficult one, and yeah, they rarely no. get praised They're for what the they spot. do. They're on the spot. So uh, I shared your comments with them, and again, they send their thank yous to Much you all. Much appreciated, so. Shirley. Yeah. Okay, so uh, board, I think we stand adjourned until Tuesday, September 11th, 2018, at 9 o'clock a.m. Thank you all. Have a wonderful month off.